How the hell can repealing a ban on something require a literal act of Congress, yet the ban itself did not require a bill to go before Congress in the first place? Hello, Florida. I am currently in you. Anyway, I was invited to come down to Pensacola, Florida by the invitation of Congressman Matt Gates and Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene to give a statement testifying against the ATF. And anytime you give me an opportunity to poke at the ATF, I'm gonna take it. So what we're here for today is an ATF oversight field hearing. This was put together by Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who you might recognize as the congressman who introduced the Abolish the ATF Act. Also joining us in this field hearing is Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman from Georgia, who's another supporter of the bill. They asked me to prepare a statement and give my testimony before the hearing, which I'm happy to do. We're also joined by Brandon Herrera. Brandon Herrera is a Texas entrepreneur, a small business owner, and a Second Amendment act activist. He owns AKG Inc., most well known as the man behind one of the biggest firearm channels on the internet, averaging over 140 million views per year, boasting over 2.7 million followers on YouTube. And we're eager to receive your testimony today, Mr. Herrera. First off, I'd like to thank you, uh, Congressman Gates and Congresswoman Green, uh, for allowing me a platform to speak about the ATF. It is one of my favorite topics. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms was formed about 50 years ago in 1972. It wasn't originally intended to be a law enforcement, or for that matter, a law interpretation agency of the federal government. Believe it or not, it was founded as a split off from the Treasury Department. It was formed as a sort of accounting division tasked with processing taxes paid on exactly what the name says, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Particularly taxes for compliance with things like the 1968 Gun Control Act and eventually the National Firearms Act. Much like many other divisions of the federal government, it did not take long for the ATF to grow and operate well past its original purpose. Less than 20 years after it was founded, we had the Ruby Ridge standoff with armed members of the ATF and FBI in 1990, followed closely by the Waco siege in 1993, both of which resulted in high profile civilian casualties by the ATF. This was a high watermark for the ATF in terms of being like a violent task force of sorts, as it was quickly determined that their actions were not only morally and legally questionable, but also a bad look for public perception. This was not the end of the expansion of the ATF's duties, however. The modern tactic that the ATF is exercising is expanding definitions of previously passed laws to include new things not covered in said laws. You see, the ATF is not a legislative body. It is not Congress, and it cannot make new laws. But in changing or expanding definition of laws already <clears throat> passed by Congress, they are essentially legislating. You see, even though Congress recently tried to reverse the ATF's ban on stabilizing pistol braces, uh, a bill that failed, the ATF did not need any such bill to implement the ban on them in the first place. They simply made a decision to redefine them as SBRs, or short-barreled rifles, and therefore regulated by the NFA, violations of which are punishable by 10 years in prison. How the hell can repealing a ban on something require a literal act of Congress, yet the ban itself did not require a bill to go before Congress in the first place? Another way the ATF has been expanding its authority is by targeting legal federal firearms license holders or FFLs, such as gun stores, gun manufacturers, and so on. Now the ATF is permitted to perform audits uh, on FFLs to ensure compliance. They supposedly want to make sure that the FFL holder is not violating the law and is keeping the proper paperwork. However, in the past few years, this has been weaponized against FFLs and the gun industry as a whole as a way of shutting down otherwise legally compliant FFLs. What was originally intended to be a measure to stop rogue gun dealers from operating outside of the law has now, under the Biden administration, become a tool for federal agents at the request of their superiors in D.C., to shut down gun stores and manufacturers for simple clerical errors in paperwork. Rates of FFL revocation are up drastically, as Biden's new zero tolerance rule has caused many innocent gun stores to close, guilty of only minor paperwork errors on forms attempting to comply with the law, as we've heard here today. I'm personally also an FFL, and I have little doubt that because I'm here willing to talk to you about this publicly, I can expect my audit to be coming shortly. But as FFLs, we shouldn't have to be worried about taking political stances against the ATF for fear of targeted backlash. As gun owners, we, should, we shouldn't have to worry about new gun laws who have the ability to turn law-abiding citizens into felons, especially without an act of Congress. That is why the ATF has to be reined in from the top, 
not only for the sake of gun owners across the country, but also to set a precedent and remind other government entities that they are not allowed to play by their own rules. Thank you for having me here today, and thank you for all the work that you're both doing to stop this weaponization, and we're happy to take questions. So I had to put her on the spot, asked who had better hair, me or Matt? Well, and I said he has better hair because also he has the beard, and it's longer uh, in the back. I think Matt would look good with a beard. He, uh, yeah, he should grow one. Ginger would like it. There you go. That's the important part, right? Mr. Herrera, you speak to a very broad audience. How are young Americans reacting to these calls to raise the age beyond 18 to be able to purchase firearms? Uh, you see it a lot every day. I get uh, messages or comments or things from people who are you know, just entering the funnel of being interested in the Second Amendment and gun culture and things. So whether it's movies like John Wick or video games or whatever, they're, they're getting interested in firearms, which is, you know, the, the, again, the entrance to the funnel to understanding more about the Second Amendment, the Constitution, everything. Um, but they're worried, they're concerned. Let's say they're, you know, 15, 16, and they just want to, you know, get a, get a shotgun or a rifle when they turn 18, that in those years between now and then, they won't be able to. And uh, I know Florida has passed that law uh, that you guys are working on repealing, that takes away gun rights for those uh, under 21. We do not have that in Texas, and uh, I'm from San Antonio, so uh, Military City USA, you see it all the time, because there's a very heavy Air Force presence there. You go to uh, gun stores all across that city, and there's 18, 19, 20-year-old uh, Air Force members that are in there, and they're excited, and they're you know buying firearms, and it's it's not pandemonium. There's, there's really no problem with it, so uh, the fact that it was passed in Florida as, as a travesty, and the, the fact that they're trying to pass it nationwide is insane. I do have to tell you this, though. I put uh, Congresswoman Green on the spot as to which one of us had better hair. Oh, my gosh. Well, what yours, do you think she for, said? Yours. Uh, yeah, she, she, she threw you under the bus, I'm afraid. I, I can take it. I can <laughs> take it. Uh, look, I'm happy to just have the best hair in Congress. Yeah, exactly, which, exactly. You know. For now. Well, <laughs> we said you, we both agreed you should grow a beard, too. I'm yeah. hoping to hit puberty one of these days. <laughs> It'll come, don't worry. <laughs> Somebody from your office reached out and just uh, asked us if we wouldn't mind coming down and dunking on the ATF a little bit. Well, what I know is that you've got such an active follower base, and we've got to convert that enthusiasm that people feel online to actual policy reforms. Our effort and our mission is to take the evidence that we're collecting from folks like you, from firearms licensees, from state lawmakers, and use that to actually force change in Washington. As somebody who's in the fight in the trenches against the ATF, what is something that they can be doing that would be beneficial for you guys to give you guys the ammunition you need to be able to carry that fight to them? We need evidence, right? When mm -hmm. we conduct investigations, oftentimes in a Congress where we've got a four seat majority of Republicans, uh, we've got to really hit them over the head with the abuse of power, with the hypocrisy, with the standards that seem to be so subjective that they function as setups to people. So if folks are out there watching and they have evidence of these abuses of power, of a standard that's being misapplied. If you've got that evidence, we need it because we need to use it as a persuasive tool to get more folks on our side. Absolutely, and where do they send that in? Uh, Gates.house.gov is our website, and actually some of the evidence that came through that portal, we were able to specifically use questioning the ATF director, setting up for our legislation to defund his salary. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic way to go about it, and I'm all on board for you and Ms. Green's uh, attempts to end the ATF, because, you know, the ATF is bullshit. But thanks, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate thanks it, Thanks for providing testimony. Thank you. Once again, I appreciate the opportunity to be allowed to speak today, but more importantly, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and maybe, just maybe, it inspired you guys to maybe get a little bit more politically active yourselves. Because at the end of the day, the only person that you can count on to preserve and fight for your natural rights is yourself. And with that in mind, the work part of my day is done. So uh, time to go enjoy Florida. And I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Now while I've got you here, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. Okay. Serious question. Who has better hair, me or Matt? Oh, you. You just threw your coworker under the bus. Wow. Uh, that's okay. So, yeah, uh, you just, I guess somebody, somebody from your office, god damn, if I could speak.